Hey y'all, new day, new verse. We continue on into Isaiah. Today we're going to be picking up with chapter 56, <laughs> sorry, 57 verses 1 and 2. The mistake there is because the break of idea kind of goes before it. And you get verse 12 and then goes right into 1 and 2. But we might break into verse 3 of it, which is actually where a new idea comes forth. And it's helpful to see the page breaks different from the chapter breaks. And it shows the progressive understanding, you know, from the guy who put it in so it makes it easier to find to now understanding, hey, oh, here's different breaks. Here's different places, because in the original language, if memory serves, there's not really punctuation. It's just continuous flow of thought. One has to actually take time to do and invest. That's why I love the translations we have. But Father God, thank you for your words. Thank you for your wisdom. Lord, lead the way, because there are raw places and difficult things in so many areas. But these verses, when it comes to loss and death and pain, Lord God, give the wisdom, give the understanding, give the direction. Give, most importantly, your perspective, Lord God, your eyes to see it, your ears to hear it, your mouth to speak it, the heart, your heart that understands, and that your Holy Spirit in us reveals so that we might know to be able to grok as you lead the way, Lord Jesus. We worship you and praise you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father. Chapter 57, verses 1, 2, and into 3. But good people pass away. The godly often die before their time. But no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. But you come here, you witches' children, you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes. Initially, I was thinking of just spending a little bit of time with the first two, because admittedly, they're kind of how I look and process death. I mean, before I ever really dug into this verse like we're doing now, the thought had come to me with uh, Robin Williams is passing. Because every time I look at what's going on in the news today, every time I look at what's going on and pick a political theater, I think that man would have stroked out with his improv genius. Like, all of the insanity going on now. He wouldn't have had a chance to breathe from all the jokes that would have been coming to him left and right. I mean, it made me wonder. It made me wonder if it wasn't done as a kindness, as a mercy, and if the idea of how it happened being the opportunity to say, hey, look, no, God understands the struggle. God, God understands the wrestle. He understands the difficulty. Points walking with him. It's not using legalism to kill each other in any way, shape, or form. It's valuing life pure and simple. When I look at these words about the godly often dying before their time, but no one seeming to care or wonder why, and we'll grieve about, oh, they died so soon, but we don't really think about not only that, but the effect it leaves. You know, the void that's there we recognize, but we don't really promote people to step into those places. Saying, okay, yep, but the show must go on. We must continue. That there has to be some continuation. We can't just die here. Yes, it is absolutely painful to have to bury Sarah in the places Abraham had to. He continued forth. Jacob had to do the same with Rachel. It's painful. Loss is painful. It simply is. There's no sugarcoating that. It's, it's painful. And there are a lot more words for it. It's honestly sugarcoating it to just leaving it a painful. I, you know, we're only three minutes into the video, so. <laughs> Taking time to seeing that more often than not, at least from my experience. Now here, it's just often die before their time. And that it is an act of God protecting them from the evil to come. This, you know, the days are evil, to borrow from Paul. Redeem the time actually take the opportunity to invest in those beautiful moments that have strategic opportunity. And I don't mean strategic in the using things and people, because again, not only Ephesians, but as we've talked about before, it's adultery. Adultery, if you're feeling like Hosea, is fun to read. Same difference. Taking the opportunities to strike while the iron is hot with intera hot while interacting with people. Saying, hey, you know, instead of being aloof, instead of being detached, my friend is going through some suffering here. Well, the word says we suffer along with those who suffer, and we rejoice with those who rejoice, and that pouring joyful things into painful places is salt and an open wound, which, although really great for purification, hurts like a something or other. So why not just be with them? 
not trying to force anything, not trying to demand anything of the person, just being there. It's, to beat a dead horse with pop culture reference, I know they've been picking up a little more recently, but look at the first Inside Out movie. Their need to process with grief that lets it out. Well, even the fact that the Joy character is crowned with sadness, because again, color-coded, right? Joy crowned with sadness or sorrow, is that not a profound thing? This, from my own experience, the only reason I know the good is good is because I've had to deal with the bad. I, I rejoice about what I've been given as the opportunity and the time, because I know what it is without making the most of every opportunity to lift each other up, not in busy work, not in trying to do legalism of thinking we have to do a set way, a set thing, or a set time, simply being, playing with our Abba, understanding that it's not about getting it perfect, it's about being perfected. Something that took my legalistic brain way longer than I want to admit to learn and to let go of. Because it is kind of a trap to hold. And I, I look at these verses here that we pick up with, and we'll probably pick up tomorrow. No, God, God leading. The, but you, come here, you witches' children, you offspring as adulterers and prostitutes. That the ones who haven't been taken, the ones who haven't been protected from the evil one to come, dying off, entering that sleep, the ones who have the opportunity to repent, God rejoices over the death of no one. And there's a dramatic difference between Abraham's rest and those who die in turmoil. Die in places with such anger, such hate, such pain. Go down to the grave with a sneer on the face that it has been born from a sneer and sorrow in the heart. Wrath painted on a face that do nothing but hate. It needs to be refined in the core. And that there's ample opportunity to change. You know, the line from Batman, either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. What if it's either die the hero or the villain lives long enough to become the next one? The next hero. Like a mega mind, if you will. I know, pop culture references. I get it. But I want it to be seen that God is constantly talking to us through every avenue. He is the origin source of words and creativity itself. He's always speaking. And in his speaking in our current zeitgeist, it makes it easier to understand these ancient words. Because the idea of them is consistently the same. The great questions of man. Why do people die before their time? Why is this evil allowed to happen? What is going on here? Who am I? What am I made for? What's the point? The... the these are the questions that are wrestled with in the text. Not, not how to do it. Who am I? Not what should I be doing, but what is the point of life itself? When we seek the source, when we seek his kingdom, when we seek the face of God, the, going through the only way possible, Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, the gate, only one. Every religion may be getting a base idea about, you know, treat each other right, but the only way that ever happens is if the wrong in us is removed. Leopard can't change its spots. Tiger can't change its stripes. But the living God can turn water into wine. So why go for a middleman? Go break to the origin source. As God himself came in the form of man, the form of a servant, humbling himself to the point of death, the death on a cross that we might live, and now is seated in heavenly places, exalted to the right hand of the Father. And for people who have that verse memorized, I'm really sorry, I'm pretty sure I've let in a little bit of the Psalms. But he is there, seated right now, actively interceding for us, welcoming us to come. Adulterers, prostitutes, tax collectors, thieves, wishers, children, the broken, the hurting, the dead, being invited from a zombie existence and a shambling corpse life to being made whole. From a world of skeletons and bones dried and dusty, worn raw by time, age, and anguish, being brought together, 
sinew, bone, muscle, skin. Finally, breath. Humans make new. That's the invitation. It's, it's not to condemn and cast the broken out. It's to welcome the hurting in. It's to say, hey, you were designed and made to be placed in the garden. But the dirt has to stay put. The waste has to stay put. The attitudes, the life, way of doing it, the old self has to stay in the grave. The new person that comes forth, that's the beauty of the imagery of baptism. Out of the grave, new life, new mankind. Made in his image, not just in form, in function and nature too. Not, you know, God nature, but like actually being humane. We're supposed to be like him. He is definitely not like us. This photograph isn't a person. The figurine isn't a man. It's the tale of Pinocchio. We're learning to be real people. The dead are often taken before their time. The good, the godly, able to rest unburdened by the trials and bothers, getting the rest that Job longed for. And while we have days, as tomorrow is promised to no one, when we have them, we can use them to lift each other up, to truly rise by lifting others. See the broken, the hurting, the needy, to sit with them. To see the joyful, the rejoicing, the glad, and praise alongside them, and to truly live. It's not about legalism, right and wrong. It's about right relationship, and it starts with seeking our King. May His favor be upon you. Know that you're loved. I'll see you then. Oops, sorry.